Good evening and welcome to Greater Somerville for April 28, 2015. I'm Kyan Anderson. Tonight, we explore the significant food insecurities that are impacting Middlesex County, how children are affected by these statistics, and what charitable organizations are fighting to reduce this meal gap in and around the Somerville community. Our guest tonight is no stranger to this topic. As founder of the Somerville Backpack Program in 2014, his organization provides about 60 of Somerville Public School students and their families bags of nutritious food every weekend. And he's here tonight to tell us more. So please join me in welcoming for his debut appearance here on Greater Somerville, Ross Richmond to the show. Welcome to the show. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Um, so anybody that watched the show last weekend, or last week rather, um, we had some jackhammering that went on. And I was approaching the show right before you came, and um, I heard it again. And I all of a sudden, I had a little panic attack. But they, they've crossed our fingers. We should be gone. good. Okay. We should be good, yeah. But if not, we'll just keep talking louder so the people at home won't even know. Not a problem. Um, how are you? I'm good. Okay. Yeah, very well. Um, welcome down to the show. Last time you were, well, you've never been in Greater Somerville. You were here in the big studio doing something else. Yes. This is my okay. first time. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here in the yeah. big set. Especially um, talking about this issue. Yeah. Well, this is an important issue. So first, I just want to, um, what we typically do is go over a little bit about you, where you're from, because I always find it interesting as to how a person ends up, why, you know, why they come to Somerville, what they do. Um, you're a native of Brookline. Yes. Okay. Close by. Close by, but then you went to school in Chicago. I did, yep. Went to school in Chicago. Okay, DePaul? DePaul University in okay. downtown Chicago. and then All right. International Studies and Political Science. Yes. Okay. After, came back from Chicago, moved mm -hmm. back to Boston um, with my now fiance. Okay. And, Congratulations. Um, thank you very much. And um, I started working in the State House. Um, ran a political campaign right off the bat. I, I studied in, uh, international studies and, and poli sci. Um, ran a political campaign, but worked in the state house for two and a half years. That was in 2012, 2014. Exactly. Now you were a legislative aide for the chair of the Higher Education Committee mm -hmm. on the House side, of Representative Tom Sanicandro. Okay, and then you became communications director for, for higher. Yeah, for the Higher Ed Committee. Exactly. Okay, so you got bumped up. Um, and then what I found interesting is that that was, would you, uh, you then went ahead, ahead and you ran in Ward 5, my ward, um, for school committee. Yes, I knocked on your door. You, so. did, you did, you did, you know where I live. So yeah, so I ran for school committee, there's an open yeah. seat at the time. Yep. Um, I have an education background, worked in education, um, okay. come from an education family. And um, now, now what, your mother was a principal. Yes, exactly. Okay. So and what was the other? There was another connection. Of um, my fiance Rochelle. She was a teacher. Okay. And I, I tutored at the Kennedy School at okay. the time. Education um, is in your love. Your education. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so after that, after that race, one of the questions I was getting a lot at the doors that I couldn't answer was, "What am I doing? Or what's your plan to deal with hunger in Somerville, especially amongst our students?" And I knew about the programs we had in the schools. And I, I knew the things that we were doing to make progress, but there's still a big gap. And so that question kind of stayed with me. And mm -hmm. it was that, that question afterwards in the spring and into the summer that I started the weekend backpack program in Somerville, the Somerville backpack program to feed kids on the weekend when they don't have access to our great breakfast and lunch nutrition programs in the schools on the weekend when, when, when they go home and they don't have that food. And so that was how you, so you kind of, that was the catalyst to that. And that was exactly. in May of 2014. Mm -hmm. Just last spring. Um, and so maybe, well, you're, I just want to put one thing, I just because you're currently living in Spring Hill. You live in Somerville. You're in Spring Hill. Yeah, I live on Albion Street. Okay. Been there for a couple of years. Three years. Yes. Okay, you're Coming ready for the green years. line like me. Yeah, I guess so. I guess yeah. so, right? <laughs> okay, so anyway, back to the Somerville Backpack Program. Um, the weekend backpack program, I should say. Um, the mission is reducing food insecurity for Somerville public school students and families by delivering bags of nutritious food containing breakfast, lunch, snack, and fresh food for the weekend. Yeah, so, so it's really to replace what their students uh, get in school. Um, so they receive breakfast, snack, lunch, um, fruit. So we also provide fresh fruit. Mm -hmm. And so every Friday we pack bags of food um, for for the Saturday, Sunday, breakfast, lunch, snack, fruit, 
in one bag with volunteers on Broadway Street at Connections Church. Mm -hmm. And then we take that food over in, in the bags and we deliver it to schools. And then after school, students in need can come who are signed up for the program, come and grab a bag of food, put it in their backpack, and then that's the food they have for the weekend okay, so to, help, wait. to help them supplement. So wait, let me understand. So you have, all, okay, so right now, your um, this program has volunteers, and you where do you where do you put the bag or where do you pack things up? Out of Connections Church. Connections Church. Now where and is that? It's on Broadway Street, right near Cross and Broadway. Okay. Um, it's near Trump Field. Okay. Um, so it's really convenient because right now we're t we're serving two schools. We do Next Wave and Full Circle. Okay. Uh, on Cross Street as well as East Somerville Community School right across the street as well. So Next Wave Full Circle is in the coming and... Say that again, you're saying it very fast. Next Wave and next Full wave Circle. And full so circle. it's the junior high and high alternative schools in Somerville. Okay. And then across the street is East Somerville Community School. Okay. So we bring bags of food, we pack them up, we, we put them in a car, and then we bring them to each school, um, put them in the fridge at those schools, and then they distribute it to students afterwards. Okay. And then we're also, just to because we're really excited about it, we're, um, we're also going to be starting this Friday at Inner Hill Community, Community School Okay. as well. So that'll be our third location that we're going to. So you're going to really bump excited. up, so it's going to be 60? Yeah, 60 so right meals. now we serve 45. Okay. We, ha we, we deliver 45, and then we're adding an additional 13-ish plus starting this Friday at Winter Hill. Okay, and so this is for public schools only, and I don't mean to sound like that's an exclusionary thing, but I guess there's just there's a there's a big need, so you've decided to focus primarily on public schools. Yeah. In the Somerville area. Yeah, because we had connections there. A lot of folks who are volunteers are parents in, at the PTA, or they are uh, parents from schools. So the public schools were really, really natural place to start. They have really high need, and. Um, and especially those schools, we started with the most high need, Next Wave and Full Circle. Now, where Very is high. Next Wave? You're so, actually yeah. like, I, I, yeah, I, I'm going to just ask that question because, like, you're all into the education world, which is fantastic. But I, I, where is that Next so Wave? So it's in the Old Cummings school, school building. It's right across from the, from the administration building at 40 Cross Street and pretty much across from East Somerville Community School. Okay. Um, so right at that intersection of Cross and Broadway where okay. we pack bags, it's just down the street. And they're right across from each other. And Next Wave and Full Circle are both on the top floor Got it. of that school. And so it's an old many, building. How many, how many volunteers do you have a week? It varies anywhere from five to ten. Five to core ten. Core volunteers. It fluctuates if someone has a family member visiting from out of town, they'll bring them. Or, okay. Or, or and people new, can new go to your come. website. We'll yes. have all this information on our blog, but um, Absolutely. go to your website and just volunteer. Like last minute. I mean, it's. I mean, not What type yeah. of a time commitment is it? So we we pack the bags 9 a.m. to around 10 a.m. every Friday morning. Oh. So it's just. Well, an, that's easy. It's an just hour. an hour. Yeah. A lot of folks they come from like dropping off kids from school or uh, that kind of in between time that a lot of people have on Friday mornings that are a little flexible with work schedules. Okay. Um, so yeah. And now, did you model this? What did you model this program after? Because I understand Cambridge has. Another, it has a backpack program, weekend mm -hmm. backpack program. Um, but you modeled yours after some, what did you? Yeah, so after Cambridge and Cambridge after Greater Boston okay. area, the Greater Boston Food Bank also runs um, backpack programs. And they're a part of a national network of greater uh, food banks. And so this backpack program is a national model to get food to kids on the weekend. And um, so, they weren't serving the Greater Boston Food Bank wasn't serving Somerville at the time and I and I looked into that I was hoping that, that they might right. come here and that needs I was change. like I'll volunteer I'll do this and um, they said no that's not an option right now so that's when I decided to uh, pilot the program here last spring um, reached out to Cambridge a woman there named Alana Mallon started a program Great. who is she's fabulous and mm -hmm. she said here's what I'm doing copy it I copied it let's you know the more yeah. programs like this the better okay. and um, so it really took off we got some funding um, from Somerville as well as um, some nurse associations we got money from Shape Up Somerville which was really helpful now are you a 501c3 yes you so are. we ha we have uh, uh, because that process takes a long time yeah I and we that. yeah so we have a fiscal sponsor the now, neighbor who is that? it's the neighborhood children's foundation okay um, Terrific woman who is my co-partner in this project. And who is that? You can Marina, give her a little shout out there Marina Sivak. She is wonderful. And <laughs> she has uh, another shout out for her. She does um, the Beautiful Stuff Project. She has an office based out on Broadway, right, right next to Connections Church, okay. which we used to be out of. 
and um, that she works in schools and takes recycled materials and helps kids come up with creative ways to do art projects, masks, what have you, and works oh, within it. yeah works that's within great. the schools to do these really creative projects with teachers that want to partner with her. And so that's called the Beautiful Stuff Project. The Beautiful Stuff Project. You can find it on Facebook. There's some lovely photos of the work the kids do there. Wow. Yeah. And so now here's the question: How do you? How do you fund this? I mean, like, I know that, I mean, there's so many wonderful organizations in Somerville, that's why we're so lucky, but um, is, do you have, like, Community Cooks, I know, supplies some of the food? Is mm -hmm. that all the time, or do you rely solely on, like, private donations, or your, how does that work? Yeah, so we're supported in a lot of ways. I kind of reached out to anyone and everyone who mm -hmm. I, could, I could think of who was interested and might be willing and to help. And there are more people out there that could be watching, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. It's summervillebackpackprogram.org. We'll have it on the thing. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, so, so people, all of our, almost all of our donations right now are coming from donors, some Somerville residents. Um, there is a program at the Brown School that's also, um, we're going to be making holiday cards or cards, greeting cards in general mm -hmm. that kids make that high schooler, the high school students are helping to print out. So there's many fundraisers going on, but the primary um, money, money we receive is from private donors online um, or writing a check. And now Community Cooks, so just so the people at home, Community Cooks is an organization like they they supply a lot of food for, for via their donations to like the Summer of a Homeless Coalition and they give you so they give you food like once a month or how does that or sometimes they're a sponsor or how yeah. does that work? So community cooks I can't say like enough about they're this. Okay, they are so wonderful. So here's so what they do is they they're really kind of a link in our community. They partner people who wanna cook or would to cook, whether they're individuals or groups of individuals or businesses and they link, link those businesses with folks who need food. Like you guys. So backpack program. Yeah. And we so Community Cooks has partnered us with Three Little Figs on Highland Ave. Love Three Little Figs. They provide us with the Lavender most delicious. Biscuits, those are where it's at. The most delicious. They have <laughs> Iggy's bread that's oh, so fresh. Don't even get me started. I'm the ham, the hungry. turkey, okay. and the cheese. So they wrap it up for us. They will. They'll send over apples or some snack like carrots, and then we pick it up from them, and then. You pack. And then we pack that at Connections Church. So is it required because of, well, like, shape up Somerville. Obviously, this, uh, this city, the mayor has gotten a really big kind of push to have, like, healthy food Absolutely. and things like that, yeah. which is fantastic. So, our, I mean, how do I say this? Because obviously, you know, you will accept any type of donations. But if, if a person were to say, be like, oh, here's some food. I mean, I think there, there's got to be some regulations, right? I mean, because, Absolutely. number one, you couldn't be getting a ton of Cheetos or anything. I mean, not that anyone, well, I don't like Cheetos, but, right. uh, but you know, like, how do you, how do you handle that? Because mm -hmm. you, you'd have to get it through, Community Cooks does it through private cooks, but have, do, it in, do it in industrial kitchens, things like that. But, like, do you ever have to say, you know, we need healthy food? I mean, because you want to obviously encourage a Absolutely. healthy lifestyle there. Right, right, right. Um, is it ever a problem? Probably not. Yeah, it's just something to be really conscious of and make sure yeah. we do it right. So in the in the space that we work in at Connections Church, it's a serve safe certified space, which means that regulations wise it passes clean kitchen. It's like an industrialized. Yeah, exactly. It's made for food, food prep. Kitchen. Okay. Um, same with the folks that we will receive food, you know, for example, Three Little Figs is obviously it's a place yeah. that, that we also get um, uh, sandwiches as well from Rockland Bank. Okay. Um, so they're another partner that's fabulous. And, um, and again, Community Cooks has been around for so long that they work with those partners. And, and it's really kind of you. effortless for us. We just receive the food that they've you know, kind of worked on that back end to do. But here's the sure. question, though. If yeah. you're looking at expanding this, which you are as of this week, yeah. congratulations. So Thanks. what I'm wondering is, is, is what, what does it require for that expansion to take place? So like if you're saying, OK, the next needy school is X, you know, like, how do you calculate that? Like, what is the price per meal? And then if, say, someone out there or some organization sees this and is like, wow, I'd really like to contribute to that, yeah. you know, give us um, some sort of a quantitative kind of, okay, you could, feed a, you could feed a child for a weekend for X amount of dollars. Do you yeah, have that? Yeah, absolutely. Your yeah, you're, okay. like, setting my pitch up for me. So, right, like, um, right now a bag of food for a weekend for one student is about $3.50 to 60 cents. That's partly subsidized. Wait, a bag? One bag of food, is yeah. Is $3.50? Yeah. So. How is that possible? Wait a minute. You pay $3.50? Because mm -hmm, we do bulk shopping. Wow. You know, so there'll be like a string cheese, an applesauce, a sandwich, 
milk, cereal, just to name a few of the, of yeah. the items in there, for example. And when you buy them in bulk, it comes down, we, you know, we look at each possible okay. scent that goes into the bag to make sure we're doing Every it most efficiently. Every single meal in the bag. So if there's, the bag is for the weekend, so you're mm -hmm. talking like Saturday meals and Sunday meals, right? So that's six meals. Right. I'm not trying to be, so okay. Yeah, so six meals. So are we talking like $3 for a, just a bag of food that contains three meals? Or all the, all the meals? It's actually, so it's actually two meals, because it's just breakfast, it's breakfast and lunch, and then a snack. So if the snack was considered a meal, but. Wow, that's like only $3? So yeah, so per day, breakfast, lunch, snack, fruit, and then the other day, Sunday, breakfast, lunch, snack, fruit. And that's all three dollars. All three fifty. Yeah, and it's actually less now because Community Cooks is we wow. making those partners happen, and that happens a couple times a month, not every week. So but. I guess what I would say, and the only yeah. reason I say this is just I, I was, as you could tell, very surprised that I'm on camera, so you couldn't really hide it. But um, so po someone could give a month twenty five dollars. That would be huge. Well, no, right. it would be very huge, right? I mean, because that's basically like each. Look at me, my doing my quick math, but. Uh, that's like feeding multiple kids for four four weeks. I mean, that's yeah. So like fourteen dollars roughly will feed a you know kid for a month. A student one one of our wow. Somerville Public School students for that's a month. That's a great pitch. Um, so that's yeah, cheap. and a lot. And what we also do is um, we give a bag of food to the student and any siblings in the household because we don't want them to take home a bag of food ah. and have to split it. We want to make sure that everyone in the household is accounted for. So you know something like twenty five dollars could could pay for a family of two two students or two two kids for a month. That's wonderful. Um, and, and so, and how, go ahead. Just to, so, so it is actually, it's, it's all the money because we're a volunteer organization, we run out of a space that's volunteer, I'm obviously a volunteer, everyone's a volunteer, um, it's all the money that, that, go, that you contribute goes towards yeah. the food that we purchase. So it's really, it's like 100%, it's great. So people can go online to your website, which we'll have on there, and you can donate or you can volunteer, things like that. Um, but that, that's just, I just am amazed by how cheap that is. Yeah, we're um, excited. But actually, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit because we have a little time. Uh -huh. And I did a little research because I wanted to understand a little bit more about, obviously, this organization or this program, rather. Um, but one of the things that I find interesting is that Massachusetts, obviously, it's a very small state, and people assume that there's a lot of people here that have money. Um, there is a lot of money in Massachusetts, but there are a lot of people that are in need. And I thought um, doing some sort of a comparison, and maybe you can help me out with some of this, but in terms of understanding where Massachusetts and then, then where you know our county um, are, stands in terms of like what type of meals and, 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 and home students, not homelessness, but the um, hunger need, um, where that is. And so I actually went online and found this kind of map, that they, they call it the meal gap. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? I have. Okay. All right. So basically this meal gap took all the statistics from 2009, 2013 from Dr. Craig Gundersons, who's apparently internationally renowned expert on food okay. and feeding America. And where does, and compared all the different states within the United States and then different countries. And so you kind of clicked on everything. Um, to be able to find out the the insecurity of the food insecurity of like families and children are incredibly impacted by these and so what I thought was interesting we can talk about this is the U.S. overall has a 15.8 percent food insecurity rate okay and a, 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 a ton of money to have to close that that feel that meal gap Massachusetts has an 11.5 percent mm -hmm. uh, food insecurity rate um, and basically. The amount that Massachusetts needs to close its meal gap is about 1.7% of the total U.S. need. So if you think about that, just thinking about that, that actually isn't, I mean, it's, we're doing pretty good in Massachusetts considering the overall United States. However, and this is where you can chime in if you want, is that Middlesex County, of all of Massachusetts counties, uh, in Middlesex County, we have 9.4% food insecurity rate. And basically, in order to close the gap for Middlesex County, we need about $82 million, $82,725,000 in dollars. But our, the food gap in our county alone is 20% of the Massachusetts gap. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it, uh, we have the highest food issue in Middlesex County in terms of hunger. Um, and I just thought that was really interesting because if you think about, I mean, maybe you can speak to that, but um, because there really is, even though Massachusetts over the entire country isn't obviously um, doing as, as, as bad as some of the other states. However, our particular county is the highest level of, I mean, of need. Sure, yeah. And so within that, Somerville has quite a high need. We have 70-something percent 
free and reduced lunch in our public school system, um, which is higher than a lot of our neighbors, mm -hmm. for example, maybe Cambridge, um, might mirror some of the statistics you think about for Boston. Yeah. Um, so that definitely, and, and when you think about the way that even Somerville is split, especially in East Somerville, we have a really high need as well. It's close to, I think, 80% in East Somerville Community School where we serve students uh, for the free and reduced lunch. Um, and we've done great things in the schools to make sure that people are accessing um, food when they're at school. Yeah. Um, um, and that was, you know, but you're right. I mean, that high need is really present here. In it's Somerville. very, pre yeah, because I mean, uh, Middlesex County is the 82 million, as we talked about, closing up. The next highest was Suffolk, which is 70 million, 305,000. And then the third highest was w w Worcester County, and that was 46 million. So it bumps down. So it goes from 82, 70, to 46 million, and then it just starts going down. I mean, you know, I was looking down on um, Martha's Vineyard. I mean, I, whatever. I was just clicking around. It, it, it's actually a fascinating website, um, which you probably know about. It's um, the uh, Feeding America website, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll put that on tonight's blog because it really does make you realize um, with just a very simple kind of graphic where the concentrations of need are um, all around the country, but obviously in our own state and our own county, um, which Absolutely. is really kind of important. Yeah, so Feeding America, they're the umbrella organization that, that, that works with all the food banks across the U.S. Yeah. Um, it's a big network, like Greater Boston Food Bank is a part of that as well. Um, so, so yeah. Absolutely. Well, they say that actually, in particular, children are the high, are they are uh, the most vulnerable to like any economic challenges um, that are facing families. So, you know, obviously the economy is doing a little bit better now. Um, but I mean, here's a question. How does, how do the students, this isn't something that obviously they're like, oh, hey, can you sign me? I mean, the, how do you approach that? Do you work with principals and teachers to understand a bit more about the people that mm -hmm. might need that? And then how do, you, how do you deliver that? And have you ever had people that have perhaps pushed back and said they don't want it, but you know they need it? Like, how do you deal with that type of a situation? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we, so just the people you mentioned exactly, principals, teachers, the folks who work in the cafeteria, our parent liaisons, um, at first, I was on the phone with Regina Bethaldo um, from the family, Somerville Family Learning Collaborative, um, and she's really in touch. And, and actually, find this at, at the school, all the schools we've worked in, they're really, really in touch with who's high need, who's homeless. You know, just in Somerville, we have I think it's something like around 60, maybe more, give or take. Um, we don't, don't exactly know the number of homeless students, so we serve a lot of those folks, those mm -hmm. students and those families. Um, and there's a lot of key people in Somerville who are really in tune in our school system, who know who those students are. So when we approach a school, and uh, our program approaches a school, school um, you know, we ask, uh, who's, do you want this? Do your students want this? Is, you know, is there a need? They say, yes, of course. Yeah. And then um, they work internally to, to identify those folks. It's open to anybody. And then we say, how many students do you have? Who are they? And they sign up through participation forms. Okay, so it's almost like an internal, I don't say internal network, but obviously the comfortability, I mean, you're wonderful, but like, you know, yeah, you may absolutely. be a more of a stranger mm -hmm. than say these counselors or these people that are connected within the Somerville community so that you would deliver the food to the school. Exactly. And then the students come, so it's not like, you know, I mean, if uh, you just have to be sympathetic to that, if there, you know the stu student would be able to pick it up in kind of a comfortable environment where mm -hmm. it wouldn't be just kind of. I always remember no, because I remember no, that way is a back. Great I, mean, point. I, I went to school in Minnesota, and there were kids that received, you know, food for free, whatever. And I, I remember there always being this when they were handing out things. I, I and so I just. Uh, that's great to hear that you're sensitive to yeah, that. Yeah. I just think no, it's but one of those. that's something. You know, we have had families who think about signing up, decide not to sign up, and for. A myriad of reasons and um, stigma is one we've heard absolutely you know uh, it's a hard barrier sometimes to cross we don't push or require or you know it's really up to the schools and that's what makes it so effective is we're going to where schools where the students are yeah. where the need is and we're saying how can we help and to the people that are representing it and then you don't okay and then exactly. you don't necessarily deal with them directly and in terms of what language barriers or anything like that that's not an issue for you because you're kind of just passing it off to the school exactly yeah the school is okay. really well equipped to do that obviously we put our um, participation forms in 
Haitian Creole, Portuguese, Spanish, and English, great. Uh, absolutely, of course, and um, it's, it's really interesting to see what the families that give back the participation forms, um, which language they filled it out in, so we get to know some of our demographic data. Um, and it, so it's really interesting, you know, we have a wide range of folks, uh, students and families, um, and it's, yeah, we, we don't actually pr directly, you know, we yeah. give surveys and we want to make sure the food we're putting in and, uh, is good and tasty and so we get that feedback. We yeah. want to make sure the families is being helped so we do that survey, but. And you go all the way up to high school. Yes. And then that, we've got a couple more minutes left, so I just want to find out a little bit more about, so, um, I know that you work with Community Cooks, and I just want to give a little shout out to Community Cooks because they've got um, they've got an event coming out uh, oh, coming great. up, yeah. and it's it, their 25th anniversary. And of course, I can't. Oh, there it is, uh, the 2015 Inspirations. Oh, excuse me, wrong one. The Community Cooks Gone with the Gala event, um, and it's celebrating 25 years. And you can go on communitycooks.org and find more details out about that. And so, what's great? Um, so great about that event to plug them because they are so fabulous. What's great is that it's this Gone with the Gala idea is we don't need to throw some big fancy gala that we do every year yeah. that you know kind of takes money and puts it towards you know the fanciness of a gala and yeah. the costs that go into that and they, so it's gone with the gala and it's you can sponsor a table or sponsor um, different levels of sponsorship that uh, replaces having an annual big gala event and yeah. it really funnels all the money into programs like ours that can use that money for the f to make, make sure that we get as much as possible for the students that need it. That's wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and put all this information onto our website. Unfortunately, we are out of time, so I need yeah. to, um, I, but I, I just, um, oh, do you do you have any events coming up? Or are you partnering with them? Will you kind of do things like through Community Cooks, like they use money and they kind of, kind of support your Yeah, yeah, many of the organizations, like we also work for Food for Free in Cambridge who give us fruit. So there's lots of events that our partners do, but we just okay. every week, uh, we accept volunteers and donations. Yes. www.summervillebackpackprogram, all one word, word, dot O-R-G. And on Facebook as well, if you want to like us and you can follow Summerville our pictures Backpack and Program. get a sense of what we do on oh, Facebook. Oh, it's great. I was just looking yeah. on there. I would like to thank our guest, Ross Richmond, for taking time to come down to Greater Somerville to explore the significant food insecurities that are impacting Middlesex County and how the Somerville Backpack Program is doing its part to close the meal gap once and for all for many families in need in our community. I would encourage all of you to check out our Greater Somerville website at www.greatersomerville.wordpress.com for more details on tonight's program. And please contact Ross directly to get involved or donate what you can to this extremely important cause. And let's assure that every Somerville public school child is given the opportunity to focus on homework and not hunger. That does it for us tonight. Thank you to the viewers at home for watching. Until next time, stay safe and stay informed. Good night, everyone.